from Rapies and Germs to the Golden View here on the Massachusetts Gaming Network, and I am your host, Nicholas McConaughey, and for our official debut, I'm going to be taking a look at Prince of Persia Sands of Time on the PlayStation 2, original Xbox, and Nintendo GameCube. Prince of Persia Sands of Time, in the simplest terms, is a third-person action-adventure platforming puzzle game. Ugh, that's a mouthful. Developed by Ubisoft. Ubisoft, a gaming company only second in my heart to perhaps Konami, has made some of the most widely respected games in history, such as the Tom Clancy games, which include... Splinter Cell and Ghost Recon, etc., as well as fellow platform games like Assassin's Creed and Rayman. Perhaps unbeknownst to some, Prince of Persia Sands of Time was actually a reboot of the original Prince of Persia series that started out in 1989 for the Apple II. Now, this was when the series first officially came to prominence, taking stride in achieving success for its large advancements in cinematic animation. The game manages to spawn two sequels, the third one being the first in this Prince of Persia series not to be a side scroller. But despite mixed to positive reviews, that was when the Prince of Persia series first go around failed and the series as a whole tanked. Now I likely won't heat up the flux capacitor and give a review on the original 1989 game, however for those that wish to pursue it, you can get an HD configured version of the first game on the Xbox Live and PSN. And aside from the game only spanning for around an hour, it's a tremendously enjoyable experience and I'd highly recommend buying it. Anyway, back on task. It's needless to say that the series has grown considerably mainstream since its first time garnering recognition. It isn't held in a similar regard to perhaps Assassin's Creed or Splinter Cell, but I think it comes with a significant esteem. I'd like to say that the entire reason behind that is the game that we'll be looking at today, a game that eventually spawned a movie of the same name that I'll take a look at in the future. I chose to review this game as my first more than anything because it's not only one of, if not my favorite video game of all time, but it's probably about the time that I truly began looking at games with a higher appreciation, an appreciation that was beyond them being a quote-unquote game, and instead being, when done well, something made just as good or superior to any painting sketched upon a canvas, no matter how marvelously. There are so many accolades that I want to give this game, that I could spend the whole rest of the review doing just that. However, in the most organized way conceivably possible, let me look at all the traits and tell you why I hold this game in such high esteem. The story begins with King Sherman of Persia and his son, the Nameless Prince, as they are passing through India with intentions of making it to both free and conquer a city with the assistance of its deer. Basically, the Prince arrogantly seeks to win honor and glory in his first battle by heading straight to the treasure vaults, only to discover the mystical sands of time. The arrogance and recklessness, I would say, besides the Sands of Time, are the elements most borrowed from the game and put into the movie. Oh, and for the record, no, you never do actually learn the prince's name throughout the series. Sands Warrior Within, Two Thrones, the 2008 game, and Forgotten Sands all keep going with the gag of him simply calling himself the prince. In the movie, however, they actually do decide to give him a name, naming him Dastan, which translates to hero in Persian. He quickly learns that the device enables him to successfully turn back time, albeit only for a short period. The prince presents the dagger to his father, however the vizier demands that the item be given to him as payment for his assistance. While the king would refuse, after a point the vizier would successfully manage to manipulate the prince into utilizing the dagger, and thus releasing the sands of time from the hourglass and turning all the occupants of the palace into monstrosities. The only individuals that are unchanged from the disastrous happenings, however, are the vizier, the prince, and the princess of the invaded city, Farah. The prince eventually finds himself teaming up with Farah in an attempt to return the sands of time to the hourglass, and that truly is where the story begins to unfold. It's a relatively simplistic premise between the two. I mean, you could tell from the get-go where they're headed with the Prince and Farah. However, in the game, it comes off as fresh and differentiating. Maybe because of the blatant chemistry that the characters have together, or maybe it's in their own special way, the Prince and Farah are both likable and relatable. I say that their relationship is simplistic, however, the other elements sell way more than enough to make the story original and great. If I could describe the story of this game in a single word, just one, I think that I'd have to go with the word adventurous, which might very well be what I use to describe this game as a whole. You begin to truly appreciate all that they've been through in their journey, the obstacles they've had to face, and notice the slow but steady changes in behavior from both main protagonists. The story is creative, fresh, enriched, and one I wish I'd never had to say goodbye to. Whenever I'm comparing this to something, or more often not comparing something else to this, usually the types of games are hack and slash, like God of War, The Newer Castlevania, Dante's Inferno, and so on. This isn't actually much of a hack and slash style game, really. The fighting mechanics are more resembling of something like Ninja Gaiden, where the attacks are arguably more strategically planned out. You'll spend almost the same amount of time on defense as you will on offense, having to execute your moves with more precision and calculation, and to be ready to block every time that your adversary starts swinging. Mind you, as challenging as the fighting aspect can be in this game, I don't find it to be as heckling and damaging to my controller as, say, Ninja Gaiden Sigma or Ninja Gaiden Black. While I say the fighting is at times troublesome and challenging, the controls are very, very good. They are more in-depth than most games that I've seen, and bring more out of the particular opponent than any other game that I've seen as well. As for the mechanics when it comes to moving, those especially take some getting used to. They're also considerably complex. However, like a bad itch, they'll grow on you. 
I remember when I first started playing the game and I couldn't successfully do much of anything. I didn't know how to jump from one wall to the other very accurately or as I said, do much of anything. But I'm happy to say that they said it changed for the better. I found myself flying through levels that previously would take me hours just by how used to the controls that I got. The controls are also very forgiving, and with the sands of time, the platforming is actually more invigorating than tedious. If there weren't sands of time, you spend a compilation of your gaming time simply on repeating parts that you've already done just to take a second shot on something that you were stuck on. But with this game, you generally get a chance to rectify your wrongdoings. For the controls that they put the gamer in, they're very admirable, and well worth your time. I'm giving them a solid 9 out of 10 for controls. There are many people that graphics are a crucial element with their games, and there are even some that will completely neglect a game that isn't of today's consoles. That's not me. In fact, I find myself sometimes revisiting my favorite PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 games more often than playing games of today's generation. I'm not one of those people that thinks the previous generation of games are necessarily better either, rather to say that I try my best to explore all of my options, and won't let a release date stop me from pursuing a game. I'm not trying to say that graphics aren't important either, or that the scenery shouldn't be intricately illustrated in a way that brings the story more to life. I'm just trying to say that just because a couple things may be a tad choppy, that shouldn't stop you from admiring the other possible elements of beauty. With this being said, for its release in the early 2000s, this game garnered a considerable amount of critical acclaim for its graphics, and rightfully so. Now, they might not be something that caused you to jump up and down on Oprah Winfrey's couch like a crazy chimpanzee now, but I still think they're nicely formulated. I think the scenery is one of the attributes that I admire most about this game. Actually, maybe it's because I'm the product of a time in gaming where things are generally more dark and gritty, which I absolutely love, don't get me wrong, where would it be without something like Resident Evil, Silent Hill, the Batman games, or, you know, Gears of War. However, with this, it's a breath of fresh air to see a game that doesn't have a darkened terrain of blackness everywhere you go, or skies constantly raining down water. This game, while it isn't especially colorful like the 2008 Prince of Persia game, is a treat for the eyes all the same, even if it's in a totally different way than the games that I mentioned earlier. As much as the attributes that I've already listed play a pivotal role in my concluding thoughts in this review, one cannot forget the pure experience held by the gamer. For example, whenever I played Hunted the Demon's Forge, I actually found myself to have an enjoyable experience, whereas others, you know, did not. Or with the first Assassin's Creed game, many loved it, and while I say it is technically a good game, my experience with the game is more negative than positive. I think it was mostly with the wonkiness of the controls, but that's a discussion for a later time. If I could summarize the overall experience that I had with this game eloquently into perfection like I want to be able to, I think it'd really make you understand why I love this game more than almost any other. The amount of broken controls that fell in this game's wake, not a joke. Seriously, I broke thousands. But the frustration didn't derail my thoughts. I enjoyed the hell out of this game. It was the first game that ever made me think, you know, there's more to gaming than what meets the eye. The storytelling, the illustration, the voice acting, the creativity, everything measures up to a great score. But the experience that I had with this game is just simply perfection. I initially didn't actually want to do a review of this game for my first because I thought, you know, it seemed like I'm being too positive or I'm not going to do criticisms very well. However, I eventually decided it was important that I did a review for it. The story, the controls, the graphics, they all get a 9, but the overall game experience gets a 10 out of 10, and thus my concluding rating for this game is a 9.25 out of 10. Thanks for joining me on this edition of The Golden View, and check regularly on the Massachusetts Gaming Network for reviews and let's plays from many other fellow gamers. Only to